So let's move on to our second speaker, Assistant Professor Che. So Professor Che received his bachelor's and doctorate degree both in SKKU. Then he worked in Columbia University from 2016 to 2021 as postdoctoral research scientist. In September 2021, he was appointed as a joint Nanyang assistant professor at the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering and the School of Material Science and Engineering at Nanyang Technological University. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Assistant Professor Che. Hi, uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction. Thanks. Uh, and thank you for having me here today. My name is Sangun Che. Uh, I'm the uh, Nanyang Assistant Professor at the, uh, uh, the EEE and the MSc department in the NTU. Okay, uh, today I will present about, you know, uh, the my expertise on the uh, 2D material and the those applications and the, how that uh, those applications actually integrate to the silicon protonic and the making a hybrid structures. All right, so uh, this is a brief summary of myself. Uh, I'm the experimentalist in the uh, the protonics and the optoelectronics and the 2D material. Uh, and also like uh, moving forward for like information uh, processing, including the quantum processing. Uh, the many of the work uh, that what I've done like in the in the past was uh, based on the nanomaterial, uh, especially in the 2D mention uh, the nanomaterials and uh, those uh, efforts actually goes to the uh, the more application levels and then okay um, all right uh basically like uh, let me start with the silicon protonic what is like silicon protonic is uh, is based on this silicon but it is not electrical platform this is a like optical platform which is using the photons instead of the electrons as the the carriers so the photo information processing uh, this kind of silicon protonic is uh, regarding as a next generation's uh, application because uh, is using a using a light is not just using uh, the electrons and uh, if we can make in, like a full silicon protonics chips uh, as you want, and then we can expect like a more high bandwidth and the high speed and the low cost and uh, the et cetera, like the lower power, like a better application. Uh, and my interest, like which is using a nanomaterial is uh, also can do individually uh, uh, very interesting because like it, it, due to the is noble electrical properties, so we can use, uh, we can make it like a 2D based uh, LED, 2D based uh, the photo detectors, like all kinds of opto uh, electronic properties. And what I do was I mix this is like two things. Uh, uh, so first is like, I, I integrate the nanomaterial in the silicon protonic platform to making a 2D silicon, uh, the hybrid platform itself. And or uh, I can integrate um, this 2D based optoelectron itself to the silicon protonics. This two is a little different. Like one is hybrid protonics and one is actually integrate the optoelectronic functionality itself to the silicon protonics. And both techniques are important for like making a full electronic square. So, uh, and you know, all this, uh, uh, the 2D silicon based integration platform is very, very uh, the promising for the you know, more uh, uh, noble application, something like a quantum processing or the another information processing, and the neuromorphic processing, all kinds of things like next generation process. Yeah, so like all these uh, objectives are like what I'm doing and then what I'm interested in. Uh, let me do a little uh, uh, like introduce for like this silicon potential. Well, like based on the light application, like how to do the light experiment is more uh, probably like this is like as you re uh, uh, the imaging, like uh, there's a lot of optical components inside, but you know, we don't need to like, like this is about the experiment, but uh, thanks for the, uh, this is silicon, uh, a great industry like effort of the silicon technology. Now we can actually making uh, all this kind of light path into the very tiny chip, very tiny chip. And this is uh, due to the CMOS technology of the silicon, All right? And you know, you can see like all uh, small. Sorry, how can I? Okay, yeah, you can see that like all small lines. That's the the path of the light, which we call the waveguide. Right? 
And uh, like we can divide like many factions of the, the categorizer. They are this uh, uh, photonic integrated circuit as a, like some passive platform or the active platform. Passive platform is just uh, using a, like this kind of light path, splitting the light. But the active platform is more complicated because we have to like uh, uh, the manipulate the light itself. You know, the, the thing is the silicon actually is a great platform for the passive platform, but the, for the active component is not because the silicon itself is actually has an indirect band gap. Indirect band gap is uh, quite critically bad in the uh, in terms of the active component platform. So which means uh, to making a like uh, uh, like a finer version of the, the silicon integrate photonic chips, then which means using a silicon passive platform but we still need the active material so like that's why you know i i capture like this is a 2d material as a, like can be a really really good to uh the active platform for the silicon protonic the reason is that like 2d families after since like uh this the first graphene is uh, uh the discovered by the, the scotch tape method you know now like there's a tons of uh, 2d material families with a different uh optical or the electrical or the physical properties uh, there's a really different kind of material list and you know those all material is due to the, this uh, really thin uh dimension or effects uh it, it can be like a extremely high tunable and uh, like all these uh, light matter interactions and the CMOS capability is also good. So like 2D material is like itself is very interesting. Uh, like quantum confinements due to the, you know, the, uh, the, their, their, uh, the, the vertical dimension is reduced to the, the 3D to two dimensional. And all these uh, like confinements is basically getting larger. And even you know, there's this uh, 2D material is in from the top view, it always shows, has the, uh, this planar uh, the dimensions, which means uh, the strong line meta interaction is also so all these uh, the the things makes the you know this two D material is fascinating for the silicon product and the more like extreme uh, extreme tunability is we can like uh, tune this uh, uh, the physical property of the two D material very easily and like indeed like this a photonic integrated approach is already you know quite like investigated in the two D material. All right. Uh, this is like a one example, uh, which is from the you know, 2D based optoelectronic, which is I have done. Like I want to just introduce like as a, uh, to, you know, uh, that makes you understand better. So, okay. Uh, the graphene is like most well-known 2D material, which is basically uh, the metallic behavior. And then the boron nitride, it has a more larger band gap, which is insulator. So uh, this example of the, uh, the optoelectronic is I actually uh, deal with this boron nitride and the graphene. I stack them like, you know, uh, the stuff from the boron nitride, I stack with a vertical way and maybe like a five layer or the seven layer if I want. Right. So at the end, uh, it can have the uh, this uh, BN, graphene BN, graphene BN structure. And uh, basically, the inside the graphene BN, graphene structure is uh, has uh, like a tunneling barriers. And uh, this is a uh, place as a some critical low in my devices. Uh, if you see like a TEM view, uh, you know, all these lattice, uh, the layer of the materials are beautifully aligned. Uh, and uh, this is also one of the examples. This is an optical microscope image. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, these are like five layers are like stacks and then we can also control you know, all the uh, the angles and the thickness or the each layers. All right, and after that, like I fabricate, you know, uh, I, I put here some electrode to contact like each graphene layers. Uh, to see the, uh, some electrical measurement behavior of this graphene, boron nitride graphene based the heterostructure, what happened was, uh, it basically shows the uh, tunneling behavior, but like if, if you apply the, uh, the, the bias through the, this two graphene layer, uh, basically uh, inside the, the middle boron nitride plays are just insulating low. So it shows the just dielectric tunneling happens, but in some branch, you know, it converted to the, uh, the FN tunneling is we call the following nodal in tunneling regions. And then, uh, you know, this, uh, the suddenly the current is actually like move up to there. The reason I explained this one is like to explain the, you know, the, the next optoelectronic behavior. Um, now, like I actually shine the laser, the light onto the, this, uh, the, 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 my sample, which is graphene boron nitride graphene. What I find was only at the uh, overall region of the two graphene layer. So this overall region has a graphene BN graphene. And uh, this graph uh, over the region shows the, the photo current, uh, is an internal photo current, which is like we, we can use this device as a photo detector. 
the region is like still is is under the you know this following the autoimmune region. The light actually helps you know this uh, the 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 carriers overcome the the barrier. So uh, the it was in the uh, the uh, the direct tunnel region, but like with the light, it can actually move to the this following tunnel region. So like the current level is like exceeded. So that's how we can detect the uh, this interlayer tunnel. And uh, this interlayer tunneling can be also tunable with the. Uh, uh, the the energy of the light and the, the applying the bias, so it's a basically tunable uh, uh, the the photo detector. And the more interesting is coming out from this point, because uh, yeah, we apply we saw like we apply the bias to the two graphene, and then we see the you know the current is like slowly or like exponentially increase it. But like normally, like uh, one volt per nanometer. This is like electric field. Like one volt per nanometer means if the uh, the thickness of the boron nitrate is ten nanometer, we apply the ten volts. So we in you know, this two D material world, we regard that this is the like a maximum electric field can apply to the, the boron nitride because if we applied more then what happened was a boron nitride, which is insulator, start to break down. So like no one, no one actually uh, approached more than uh, this one volt per nanometer, but I has some suspicion that like, what happens? What happened if I like go further? What happened was, you know, this uh, exponential current increasing behavior is uh, still, still move on and it goes to like milliamps lab. Yeah. In the same time, I found like that light is coming up. Yeah. I, I looked the look through the and what happened was the light light is actually come on from the this over region. It start it initiate from the you know this uh the uh the over edge but you know it, it like slowly fulfilling the, the between region. Which is actually nonsense to me because this is not the, uh, the life from the graphene, and uh, this is life from the boron nitrate, which is in the middle region. Okay, but if this is the the light of the graphene, then, then it should be thermal uh, radiation. It's like more like a black body effect. Yeah, so like a filament effect. So the color should not be like this white. You know? This white light and something like you know white like light. You know, ex uh, explain that this is not the, uh, the from the graphene. It is from the boron nitrate. Yeah, and uh, we I measure the you know this uh, the electroluminescence. What is the spectrum? What is what kind of light is comes out? Like a two different kind of light is coming in the scene. And uh, first is like UV region because of the band gap of the boron nitrate is really high, and uh, there's also some of the visible range, which is compared to the this uh, UV range. This is relatively small, but like anyway, the uh, this uh, visible range light is also coming up. All right. And what happens in there? This I, I was I wonder like what happens in the this middle bone I tried. I actually look through the uh, this TEM uh, cross sectional TEM view, and it looks like the boron nitride changed a little bit. Like uh, I don't know what happened exactly, but you know, in the dark field, the TEM actually show like uh, the better result. Like you know, yeah, there's uh, like some defects and the uh, the new alignments, uh, the all the distortion that happens in the middle of the boron nitride, which means. With the really, really high electric fields, you know, the support on nitride start to break down. Yeah, we know, but like, you know, not fully break down, but it changed, like it generate the, the lot of defects and the probably that, that defects as the plays the important low for the slide. Yeah, and then we did uh, some uh, simulating and the theoretical calculation for like uh, what kind of defect sources into the boron nitride. And there's a possible boron nitride defects here, like uh, MB centers, uh, boron nitride vacancy, like a uh, carbon impurity nano. All right, like uh, I can conclude like uh, all this, uh, the, the front four defects are placed uh, some important low in the visible light, uh, visible light emission. But in, in the, this carbon impurity defects actually plays a lower or some the 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 UV UV reasons, yeah. All right. Uh, to the summaries, to the summary, like uh, in the in the beginning of the uh, uh, so like in the, in the low electric field region, so this device can play as a low as the uh, photo detector because it can detect the, the interlayer photo current. But if you apply the more and more, like what happened was now we can not detect, not only detect, we can actually emit the light. So this is a bifunctional uh, devices, which is in a, in a one device, it can either do the photo detection and it, it can do the light emission. 
and uh, the basic like load is like there's a, some defect uh, state is in uh, like in the, is a, is a formed inside of the boron nitride, and then that's uh, the defect to defects and the band alignment to the uh, the band edge to the defect emission dominant this large. Um, yeah, and uh, actually, this is the reason that I introduced the, that example, like a graphene boron nitride graphene. Uh, this the this is the one technique that I actually using uh, this uh, AFM. Uh, AFM, uh, as uh, Vice President Joe said, like you know, it's just beautiful tools for the the characterization. But like I use this one not only for the characterization. I use this one for the uh, some fabrication technique because I found like this graphene. Uh, the AFM is actually really, really fascinating tool for pattern the graphic, like lithography, the uh, nanometry. You know, uh, I using a, uh, uh, I call the uh, this uh, uh, nano uh, anodizing uh, the mode for this one. Um, so I making you know, some uh, 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 the water environments in the in the, in the surrounding the graphene, and I apply the AC bias to the uh, this uh, the tip, and I can see uh, this uh, graphene is uh, like a well patterned like that. And there's like also relevant papers explain like how this has happened. There's like some capacitor, like a coupling modes happens to the uh, the bottom side of the silicon and the, in the, uh, the the top graphene region. And it is like water-based things like making a local anodizing oxidation of the graphene. At the end, the graphene is burned out. Yeah, the, the, the good thing of the, this kind of technique is, so we don't need to do the, any lithography. Lithography requires some polymer layer, like either like photo uh, register or the even register, which means it graphene has to be uh, attached to the, any kind of polymer, even after we removed this polymer, but the polymer is not fully removed. It's not clean because graphene is one atomic layer, one carbon atom layer thick. But the, compared to the, this uh, graphene thickness, you know, this polymer is quite, quite, quite dirty. So the, the problem happens if, if I do the, this regular lithography, uh, if I do the regular lithography, then the, the thing is I cannot pick up, I cannot make you know, this beautiful heterostructure, right? But with the uh, uh, AFM-based nano patterning, you know, I first uh, pattern the graphene as uh, this, uh, like a strip trait. And then, uh, because it never attached to the uh, this uh, the polymer, and the, even the edge is very precise and the very flat, so I can I have no problem to you know pick up with the, another boron nitride right? to 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 making a, this uh, uh, the 2D based the heterostructure. So it's the same thing, BN graphene, BN graphene, BN. But like now the two graphene layer is a patent within a AFA, and after that, yeah. Oh, this is a, like failure. <laughs> This is an example of the failure. Like there's a, some the graphene layer is a tilting, right? But this is a successful one. And uh, this uh, uh, the individual electrode patterning for uh, the each graphene line, which means I made uh, the three by three like a multi array of the this BN uh, line emitter or photodetect. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is like example that I can I can turn on the you know, all the light as I want. Like you know I can seriously like connect. Uh, this is another example that uh, I, I do the uh, some down conversion light because uh, I uh, use, this is a well known technique for the uh, the LED society like uh, using a post for like uh, we emit the long light but you know uh, if the the light is uh, emitted the light is go through this post for like some up uh, I know down conversion happens so I can generate the the, the light that I want so uh, I, I try to you know making as a visual age more rich so like using a post for like you know you can see the lead shape like the visible is more like coming up yeah right uh, this is technique and this is another example of the light light emitters so it looks like a similar configuration like a BN graphene BN, but you know here the active now the active material the light emission material is not the boron nitride uh is mos 2 mos2 monolayer mos2 is a direct band gap and is a visible band gap and this uh i, I still using a boron nitride but this boron nitride plays a lot as a just tunneling barrier right it's uh it's not in a light light emitter in the, in the previous case so uh with this uh, uh little more complicated by structure i can making an led which is uh the el performance is exactly the same as the pair of the mosc2 the beauty of this kind of device is i can select any kind of other 2d material inside right which means i can generate the light whatever i want if i want the near ir 
light, then I can put the near IR 2D material inside. Or if I want to like a UV light, like I can do like, so like this, uh, you know, the band gap corresponding to the, the material itself that I can do like in the, in the same. All right, there's uh, like several more examples, but uh, now let's move on to like what I do also. This is like my identity that uh, this is the, the image of the silicon and the silicon nitride based the waveguide, uh, which I, I fabricated. So the, in the vapor scale, we do the uh, this waveguide fabrication first. This is passive platform. Right, and then after that, like after 2D integration, I can finish up the, you know, all these materials uh, and then the electrode pattern uh, to finalize the, the device purpose. It's a one example of the modulator. All right, so in the, my lab, uh, I can do the, uh, this vapor size uh, silicon protonic chips. And after that, 2D integration happens. And then I can do the, uh, this, uh, uh, the 2D silicon hybrid protonic arrays. Uh, um, this is like simple description of the how to you know, integrate the 2D material. 2D material has a different kind of formation. First of all, it can just have a, like a single crystal material, which is actually still obtained from the scotch tape. Scotch tape is too great because it can give us like really, really high quality single crystal. But now uh, uh, my expertise is actually I can making a like uh, this 2D based heterostructure, whatever the thickness, whatever combination, whatever rotation things that I want. So this kind of uh, uh, the artificial band device structure is one kind of a formation and the large area CVD or the full film is also the one kind of a formation of the 2D metric. Whatever the formation it is, uh, I can actually integrate like every kind of formation to the silicon or silicon nitride based, uh, the, the protonic things. And this is the, you know, the result of that one. And after that, then I finalized in the order the fabrication for the device. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, and I, I keep making uh, like this kind of a 2D based, 2D optoelectronics functions. And uh, this is a one example of the optical communication with, with uh, this 2D and the silicon. So uh, uh, now I have uh, like some uh, emitters and the photo detector, and I, I try to put the one device at the end of the uh, waveguide, and I put the on another device in the end of the waveguide. So here's uh, like, so, at the end, like I put here uh, some light emitters and another another photo detectors in the end, which means like one can generate the photons and one can detect the photon, which means like it can communicate each other. So like one generate, one detect. Right? So this can like later like they can move on to the like a photonic sensor. This is like very simple, simple basic, you know, uh, the product concept of the how can you know this uh, optoelectronic functionality can beneficial for that to do this. Like, all right. Uh, yeah. And the grand vision is like, I have to like make more uh, essential, essential, uh, the, the functional uh, devices for the, you know, uh, uh, the full, uh, full functions, uh, silicon protonic based chip. So still there's a long way to go because like, you know, like we need to do more stuff over the memory. We have to do the more like resonators and like photon source, like what kind of wavelengths the line with, like either like LED is okay, or the, we need a laser, or the, if we want to move to the uh, some quantum information, things are more and more complicated, but it's a very exciting field. And then I, 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 I thanks to you know, Park Systems to you know, you know, I, I, I working a lot for like using a lot uh, this uh, uh, this AFM tools for a lot in, in terms of like characterization and the fabrication and doing many other things. Okay, this is uh, uh, the end of my talk, uh, and the thank you very much and. Uh, any question will be welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you very much for that wonderful talk, Prof. Che. So any questions for Prof. Che? So for our common information to so this uh, simple service uh, live streaming, so we also have online participants. So for our online, uh, we're also waiting for questions. Uh, both for the floor, okay. Yeah, the possibility of a 2D uh, material has been studied for quite a long time, and then there's the many promising uh, researches. So is there kind of a, a real life application right now actually the practice with the 2D material? Oh, uh, that's, that's a very sharp question. Like, <laughs> but indeed, yes, uh, uh, you know, the TSMC you already like a work with, you know, uh, in the electrical device wise, we actually has uh, some, 
passive aluminum that like really 2D material gonna be beneficial or like exchange the silicon. But no, no, like not exchange the silicon, you know, 2D material shows already uh, some beneficial and like some ability to use in the some via or the context or the uh, some metal, uh, the interconnects, like something like that. So, and I, 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 as I know, the TSMC is like already like working on the, for that. You know, and my interest, which is like go move on to the optical platforms and the optical platform and the full size optical platform, I think they need a little more time, at least like five more years. So uh, not right now. Uh, okay. okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Oh, okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much, Prof. Right. Thank you very much.